So before we get to today's video where we're going to look at the five most disappointing MLS teams so far this season, I just wanted to quickly say that there is no news of the week episode this week because there wasn't really a lot of news that I would be warned me to do a news of the week this week. I mean, the biggest news from this week was on Monday when the Columbus Clue inexplicably decided to to change their, their name and also their logo and that obviously I did a video about that and I've got a lot of feedback from that video and certainly I think think all of you that have commented in that video can agree that the logo and the rebrand is absolutely terrible and you know we, we shall see what's going to happen whether or not if Columbus is indeed just going to stick with the rebrand despite the anger that a lot of crew fans are expressing toward toward the ownership and also the front office or maybe they're going to think that yeah we screwed up we better decide to, to change it before we we're going to even anger more more of the the fan base but you know besides that there really isn't a lot of news that has happened no crazy rumors that has happened from this week although today there was a signing that was made and that is toronto fc decided to acquire dom dwyer and i'll talk a little bit more about that in the preview or even in the review if he is going to be included in the squad in tonight's game against Columbus or even maybe in in the star 11 in this game although I doubt that he's going to be in the star 11 in this game considering they literally just announced today that they of course acquired Dom Dwyer but either way uh let us actually get into today's video and you notice I am wearing a Minnesota United jersey this is actually the the white drift kit that Minnesota used to wear I think back in the 2018 2019 season actually I think it was the the 2018 season that they basically wear wear this drip drift kit and I, I always say that this is probably the worst kit that Minnesota United has ever had in their franchise history and in fact some part of this drift kit is kind of already falling apart actually I'm not quite sure you can see it here but part of the target logo is started to already peeled off a little bit and you know the reason why i'm wearing this jersey is that they are number one in terms of the most disappointing team so far this season and i also got to remind you guys that this is not a ranking uh just because i put minnesota united at number one doesn't mean they are the the most disappointing team so far for in terms of the five most disappointing so so far in this mls season but i think in everybody's mind they are no doubt the most disappointing team so far this season like nobody would have imagined that this team would be 0-4 right now as we head in into week five of the season and become the only MLS team to get to register a single point now I'm not going to also talk about why exactly that has been the case and what has went wrong with this team to get off to such a horrendous start because I've talked about this a lot of time and I don't want to have to repeat it again in in this video but all i'll just say is that you know for now as bad as things have gone for this team as, as much as much as as i'm pretty sure the fan base are absolutely angry especially at adrian he even want him to be fired i'm not at that point yet and that you know i do still believe that this team is going to turn around and again since we're still so early part of the season like we'll only play a little bit over 10 percent in the season we still got 30 games left toward this season I do believe that this team eventually is going to figure it out and eventually going to turn around because again there's just too much talent on this team to, to continue to go on this losing streak and I'm also just hoping that this might be just one of those cases where you know every MLS team does have a bad stretch of run and you know it seems like for Minnesota they have their bad stretch of run at least for this season maybe in the beginning of the year but once they do turn it around and if they can finally get their first win tonight against Vancouver maybe things are going going to to change right now but yeah there's no doubt that Minnesota right now not only are not exceeding any of the expectation that we expected this team team to be but probably something that we that would be this is probably the worst case scenario for for minnesota to start the season 0 and 4 and are really now digging themselves in a deep hole to tr try try to dig themselves out if they want to to get back into the playoff conversation but at number two uh i am going to say fc cincinnati so you know besides minnesota united i think if there's another team you could also say that has been the most disappointing team so far is fc cincinnati and you know i hate the fact that i have to put them in in 
this video and I hate the fact that I've always have to to associate the word disappointing and with with Cincinnati at at the same sentence because this has been the the story for this team with with now their third season in MLS where there's just been nothing but disappointment for this team and I was really hoping that this year with the signings that made this off season maybe things can finally change and maybe this is a time where we're going to see FC Cincinnati no longer become the laughing stock in the league and at least in the first game against Nashville and for the first 15 minutes of the game when they went up 2 nothing and see two of their biggest signing this offseason in Lucho Acosta and Renier score and you're thinking well looks like things can have turned turn different for Cincinnati and maybe they can definitely be a respectable team and then the collapse happened against Nashville FC and it just feel like they never have recovered from from that collapse in the first game because after that they they gave up five goals against NYCFC all of them came from set pieces and then you know they did play kind of a little bit better against Orlando City and I, I kind of am sugarcoating a little bit of their performance against Orlando City because you know it was still not a, a great performance but yeah you know this has just been a disastrous start for FC Cincinnati something that Cincinnati fans have been pretty much used for and I can also understand why a lot of fans not only are upset the fact that the team team is looking like they're going to be a wooden spoon contender but you can clearly see their their fans are fed up. Like I talked about how their fans have sending wooden spoon to the front office to kind of protest in terms of the bad performance the team has, and you know I just hope that eventually things are going going to change. And maybe like what I said about Minnesota, you know, for Cincinnati, you know, I know they have been in this 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 situation before where it feels like the sky is already they fallen but you know it's still very early in the season and I kind of would say this for every single team where even though they are on this list right now it doesn't mean that all of these teams will not make the playoffs and they end up being the worst te team in their respective conference because again it's very early in the season maybe some of these teams just have a bad stretch of run and eventually they're going to turn turn it around and actually be 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 back in the playoff conversation but you know for FC Cincinnati I don't think that that probably is something that they'll do but at least maybe this is just a bad stretch of run and eventually things are going to turn around but you know try telling that to and Cincinnati fans and and realize that that probably is not the case because they've seen the story before and they know how it's it, it's going to end especially with with the way that the, the last two season has been now moving on to the next team I am going to say it's going to be uh, the Chicago Fire. So, for the Chicago Fire, in some way, the Fire kind of is having a similar season as what FC Cincinnati has having, where, you know, like Cincinnati, they went up 2 nothing in the first 10 minutes in that first game against New England, and everything was looking rosy and all. But then the collapse, of course, happened where they gave up two goals to the refs in the first half, and it looked like they were really reeling in their their first game and then ever since you know they got a 3-1 loss against Atlanta United on the road which that was a very typical Chicago game from last season where they had chances to potentially score more than the one goals that they scored but they didn't take advantage of it and then they have some defensive mishap on the other end to cause them to lose 3-1 in that one and then it's followed by back-to-back -back just games that they they just didn't even show up whatsoever like in that game against the Red Bulls I, I couldn't tell that they think that they were having a bye week that that week or did their team just won the bye week sweepstake of MLS because they definitely did not show up in that game against the Red Bulls and what's even more alarming is that the very next game when they're playing at home at Soldier Field against the Union now granted the Union is a tough team to play and they are the defending supporter shield champion but they're also a team that are probably a little bit but knacker from from that game against Atlanta United and the and knowing the fact that the fire at least they do have a respectable record at Soldier Field you would think they would actually show up for that game uh no instead they did not show up in that game game either they were flat throughout the full 90 minutes and I think that game is probably the biggest concern if you are a Chicago Fire fan because you know we know this team suck on on the road they 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 t tend to knock not able to get a lot of points when they're on on the road but if they kind of perform like that even at home then that is brings up a new new concern and that that if this kind of does continue this could once again be a long season for the Chicago Fire team and it, it sucks the fact that this is once again going to be a long season because I thought last season was kind of the 
season where you know with the new ownership and 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 with pretty much them kind of becoming almost an expansion team and kind of got that one out of the way maybe this year they can can basically fully improve and make it to the playoffs but instead at least in the early part of the season they have definitely took two step back and have looked like that the chicago fire team of all where this team always have been kind of a basement dweller for the last 10 years but now moving on to number four and i'm gonna say it's gonna be fc dallas now for Dallas, you know, besides that 4-1 win against the, the Portland Timbers uh, so far this season, and I believe Dallas is actually the only team I have here on the list that actually have one win because the next team I'm going to put also have not have a win so far this season. But for, for Dallas, you know, that win, I would kind of also put a, a bit, bit of an asterisk in terms of that because, you know, they were playing against a, a Timbers 2 side. Like, they when, when they're playing against a, 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 a B portland timbers side you kind of expect that they of course should should get the win which you know they of course did so but that's really been the only positive for this fc dallas team i mean it has definitely been a slow start for this team you know they had an uninspiring new new draw against colorado got absolutely slapped out out of the 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 stadium against the the quakes losing 3-1 in that game uh you know they did win 4-1 against the timbers as i mentioned it was against a very weak timber side and pretty much against against a Portland Timbers 2 side. And then in the very next one against the Houston Dynamo, they also look kind of uninspiring in, in that game. And yeah, I mean, they are definitely not off to, to a great start to the season. And especially the fact that they have already dro dropped points three times at home this season. That's kind of a little bit alarming because this is a, a team that, as I mentioned before, they need to win most of their home games and need to, to not drop as much points points at home as possible because we know when they go on the road they do not do well on on the road they they tend to, to re really struggle when they when they go on the road and if this does continue and especially of how how the the west this season is much tougher and i talked about how the play, playoff this season you know you really need need to get a lot of points this se season and you re really really need to to win a lot of these home games and maybe even take some role points points to maybe even make it to the to the seventh seed in the playoffs this season dallas is definitely not off to to a great start so so far so yeah let's see if they can of course potentially pick that up later and that you know again this is a, a, a team that as i mentioned they cannot afford to drop drop many home points as they already done so far for this season and actually did i say that they drop home point points three times this season it's actually twice i forgot they only played three games so far this season but now moving on to the last team that i'm going to put on this list and this one you know it's tough for me to put toronto on that list because you know when i decided to create this list i decided to not put any cco team on here because it's understandable why all these mls team that is in cc cco has struggled in the beginning of the season because it's really tough for MLS team to basically juggle both competition and still do well in both of them. Like there's not a lot of MLS teams that have been able to do 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 that. And it seemed like Toronto FC is a clear example of what happened when you're trying to juggle both competition and still unable to do well at, at one of the competition. Although technically, you know, they haven't really done well in both of the comp competition at all and you know for this this team the other thing that i also are kind of a little bit skeptical to put them on on this list is the fact that they've been dealing with a lot of injuries and this was kind of the thing that i've said in the beginning of the season that i worry about this toronto team with the way that they have don't have a lot of depth in their team and they heavily rely on some of their their star power in this team if those star power does start to get go down with an injury which we already kind of saw saw in the beginning of the season them without Alejandro Pozuelo, Josie Outdoor, and Ayo Aquino for the first couple of weeks. You can see how how bad this team start start to get. But that being said, you know, I still put them on here on the list because, you know, TFC is a team that has a lot of expectation. And even though, you know, they are do, dealing with an injury crisis right now, that's probably not, not a, a good valid excuse. And it, in many ways, it just kind of shows you that clearly they're their their front office needs to do something in the summer transfer window to try to adjust 
uh, just the, the depth of this team. Yes, they of course got that big signing in Jefferson Sotado, who most likely is going to be be a, a replacement for Pablo Piatti that they lost this offseason. But that's not really a signing that is going to use use for death. I mean, that's a good signing to, to, to add more attacking power on the wing. But that does not solve the issue in terms of a team that does not have, have a lot of death. And that once those those, those players, players that are kind of like the, the, the marquee player in the starting eleven goes down with injuries, then they basically kind of look like like a TFC 2 side. And we know anytime when this team become a TFC 2 side in MLS, they tend to do not do very well. So, yeah, you know, I think, think for Toronto, that, you know, just along with that, I think maybe that might be, be enough for me to put them on the list. But again, I do kind of feel a little bit, bit I feel like maybe I'm a little bit harsh to, to put TFC on this list, especially with the injuries and also... So the star players that they're missing so far this season. And, you know, anytime when you lose a lot of your, your most important player on the team, you're going to definitely have struggle and, and maybe get off to a bad start like they have so far this season. But, yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much it for my five most disappointing teams so far in MLS. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of all of these teams. And, as always, if there's any team that I didn't put here on the board that you want to, to, to you know, talk about, it's kind of like an honorable mention in the comments below let me know know in the co comments below but either way hope you guys enjoy this video and i will see you guys next time